Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to quick tutorials and topics which I feel are essential to understanding the software that we use day to day as designers. Uh, today's topic is for Photoshop and the concept that we will be covering is non-destructive editing. Um, the reason that this one is so important is because a lot of times when you are working on things as a designer, you're basically making your first version, your first edit, and then other people are going to be involved and they're invariably going to have tweaks. So by working non-destructively, you're basically preparing yourself for knowing that edits are coming. And what non-destructive editing means is instead of, say I were going to adjust this background here, I could just pull up my levels dialog um, and brighten it up that way. But if I know that, you know, 20 minutes from now I'm going to have a review and somebody might tell me to back off on how bright that is, by just using my levels dialog I've destroyed all of that data. So instead I should use non-destructive techniques like um, layer adjustments and level adjustments and adjustment layers because by doing that if I'm going to say hey this is my great idea and I pull out a gradient here and I brighten it up and I make him really bright and cool if somebody tells me to either tone that down or maybe they love the effect but they don't like orange and they want blue instead and they want it to look exactly like it is now but just with blue um, if I use layer masks and adjustment layers and things I have sort of non-destructively set up my file so that I can edit it very simply for myself later um, so the easiest way to do adjust or non-destructive editing is one use adjustment layers instead of using these actual commands so anything that you see listed here under a, under adjustment layers should be applied this way and not with the image commands this way. Um, and then secondly to that is layer masks. Um, and layer masks are important because you might go into a photo and edit it and say, I throw a layer mask on him and I get his arm out of there. Like for some reason we don't want his arm in the photo. So we just go ba ba da ba da ba da all I'm doing is painting with black onto a layer mask. Um, and if you alt click the layer mask, you can see what you've painted there. But by painting the black into the layer mask, I'm just saying I don't want this particular data to show up where it's black, but I do want it to show up where it's white. So let's say this was my design and I go in there and I'm like, hey, let's all review it and everybody thinks it looks great, but now all of a sudden we want his arm back. Um, and I know this is kind of a weird example, but when you get out there in the world, your edits will probably be more like, yeah, we really like the dog in this shot, and then now we don't. Or we really liked it blue, but now we want it red. And it'll just be very similar uh, things that you'll have to change, just not necessarily as drastic as the arm. But say I went in there, and everybody liked this, and then right before it has to go to print, we suddenly want his arm back. If I had deleted it with the eraser tool, I'm kind of screwed because that data is gone now and I can't get it back. Whereas if I used a layer mask, I can just very quickly delete the layer mask. Suddenly I get all my data back and we can move on with our day. Um, so really the whole idea is like just don't ever permanently delete anything. So like don't use the eraser tool. Uh, use layer masks. Don't ever permanently destroy data by brightening people up or doing any sort of tweaking or anything like that with levels on the exact data itself because as soon as you make that adjustment if you ever want to back it off again and darken it back up you've already destroyed all that data uh, and not set yourself up for future edits and if you ever close out of your file you're gonna lose all your undo history so it really sort of just future proofs your um, future proofs your document so that you can edit it later uh, and so that anytime there's a tweak or adjustment, you know exactly where you applied it, how you applied it, and you're able to adjust the values later should you need to. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of tutorials, be sure to check out some of the other topics in the Essential Training series. Uh, and as always, if you have topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.